Hello again, and welcome to another episode of the Uranium Market Minute. My name is Justin Hewn. I'm your host. I'm the founder and publisher of the Uranium Insider Pro Newsletter, the only investing newsletter that focuses solely on the uranium space and publishes on a regular monthly basis. Thank you so much for tuning in. Really appreciate it. This is a, a new podcast that we're doing, um, making it a regular occurrence, ideally on an almost daily basis. Really appreciate you tuning in today. Um, quick little bit of housekeeping. This is not intended to be investment advice. I am not a financial advisor, and this is not intended to be financial advice. Please do your own due diligence when it comes to your own investments. We discuss a very volatile sector, and it's important that you take responsibility for your own investment choices. With that said, we have another exciting day in the uranium space day after day. It seems like I'm saying this, but it continues Let's jump right into the daily scoreboard. We're going to discuss the uh, spot price of uranium. The fund flows into SPUT and the ETFs. Spot price currently, uh, the ask $51. We've finally broken through that $50 barrier, um, up over a dollar since yesterday's close. This is a huge, huge barrier. The spot price of uranium is now at a nine year high. We are officially, officially in a full fledged bull market for the uranium commodity folks. Um, Sput flows. Yesterday, uh, the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust, they raised $39.4 million in new capital, purchased 100,000 pounds of uranium, and they're sitting on a cool $51.9 million of cash. Thus far, they have raised $359 million of capital since, the, uh, since their ATM went live one month ago. That's absolutely phenomenal. They purchased 7.9 million pounds during that four weeks. Just a huge, huge uh, development for uranium over this past month. Probably the biggest month for the commodity, um, if not in its history since the previous bull market. The ETF flows are staying extremely strong as well. Just yesterday, URA, the, the prominent, the Global X Uranium Fund, the largest ETF in the space, issued 1.8 million new shares. And URNM, the, uh, the largest pure play uranium ETF issued 650,000 new shares. Combined, the flow into these two ETFs yesterday will lead to an excess of $98.6 mil uh, $98 million of new capital, new mandated buying of their underlying holdings. This is why we are seeing such small pullbacks in the stocks. In September alone, these two ETFs, over $400 million in new money has come into these ETFs um, in terms of share issuance that has gone into the purchasing of their underlying holdings. Some of these stocks have, uh, have pretty thin floats, and you'll see big moves just from the supportive buying of these ETFs. So it's something we watch every single day, and it's important to understand this if you're looking for pullbacks and you're seeing big flows still in the ETFs and a lot of new, uh, new shares being issued. Those pullbacks are going to be brief and probably not as deep as you would expect or like we saw in July and August. Let's check out the charts. Taking a look at Cameco here, there's quite a few charts in the space that are making this kind of similar pattern since we launched pretty close to off the 200 day back in, uh, back in August, just a few days after the ATM went live. And I, I think the low in sentiment was just a few days before this, right? That's Sput started, uh, their ATM went live on the 17th. They started buying, the price of uranium started moving and the stocks kept coming down for a couple of days and people were pulling their hair out. Well, just be patient folks. Look at what happened since then. Um, Cameco is up huge since then. Um, not quite a double, but pretty close to it. Now what we're seeing is these strong rises followed by a really brief period of chop. Um, it's doing it again. Now we're sort of forming a, a little bit of a bull flag here. It's kind of early to say that, but it's looking like a, a bull flag forming on CCJ. Let's take a look at the ETFs here. URA. Again, a tiny few days of chop here after a big move, followed by a huge day. Um, this is last Friday, I believe, um, followed by a, a little bit more chop, but generally extremely strong here. Um, URNM, the largest pure play ETF. Similar pattern. Let's check out next gen. Next gen forming a, a more of like a rising, it's almost like a rising channel, or a, it's a bit of a bull pennant here. Um, looking extremely strong in the perfect bounce off the 200 day. Um, the stocks are having a little bit of a, a weak day today, but honestly, with the spot price continuing to move like this, 
I really don't see this, um, these pullbacks holding for very long or going very deep. Um, really quick, let's just jump into a quick question from, uh, from the mailbag here. Justin, has the arrival of SPUT and the current price action for SPOT and Uranium altered your time frame for this investment? That's a great question. Um, prior to even the announcement of, of Sprott taking over UPC, which was announced back in April of this year, um, I was still looking at this to be um, a, about a three to five year investment. Um, the, the fundamentals, in my opinion, generally show that we need to rise up to that marginal cost of production range of you know, 60 to $70 a pound over a reasonable time frame, maybe two to three years. That would be a slower grind. It would be healthy for the overall sector. Um, and we'd have a, a lot more time to sort of gauge um, entries and exits and have a more general kind of uh, sinusoidal wave, higher, high, higher, low, higher, high, higher, low. Um, now that Sprott is, is doing what they're doing, we've seen almost 360 million in, in capital come into that trust in less than a month via the ATM. Um, and 8 million pounds purchased just about with a 50% move in the commodity. Nobody expected that type of move to happen with, um, I mean, 8 million pounds is a lot to purchase for an end user in the spot market in a single month, but a 50% move in the commodity in only 8 million pounds purchased, no one expected that, okay? So yes, I actually think that this has altered my time frame for this investment. I think if we're lucky, we see two to three years before the peak of a spike. And it could happen much, much faster than that. This is, um, this is why we're watching the fund flows so closely because this is a fund flow story now. Uh, the fundamental story was based on supply and demand. And while that is technically the case in what's happening here, there's big demand coming to the spot market and not a lot of supply. Um, we're not talking about demand coming from nuclear utilities. We're talking about demand coming from, coming from, from financial players. So in a sense, it's, uh, it, it's kind of synthetic demand, but it's demand nonetheless, right? So I think that um, as long as the funds continue to flow into SPUT and into these ETFs, it's, it's game on and it's only gonna go, keep going in this direction. And again, we will see higher highs, higher lows. We will see pullbacks. We'll probably have a couple of gut-wrenching pullbacks. Something will pop this pin um, for, for even in the short term, maybe there's another type of FUD story like we saw a few months back with uh, the, the, the leak at the Taishan plant in China, which turned out to be sort of a non-issue. Um, maybe we see uh, the spot price pull back a couple of dollars during the course of a week and the market freaks out and, and some traders take some gains. We're going to see that kind of stuff, folks, but you just have to watch the fund flow and you have to pay attention. Is real money coming into the space right now? Yes. Will it continue? We believe so, but you have to watch that. So as long as we see those funds flowing, then this is going up and it's going much, much higher. Short term is anybody's guess. Uh, mid to long term, let's say um, at this point, honestly, mid to long term for this type of trade is gone from the three to five year range to the two to three year range. And, and it honestly could happen faster. So um, stay on your toes. Uh, I still believe at this point that dips and weakness in the market, while the spot price continues to increase, dips in the equities, in my opinion, are opportunities to add or to enter if you're just arriving. I still think we're in the early innings of this thing, $51 a pound. Um, I believe this price spike is going to uh, exceed most people's expectations and far exceed what the, what the market actually needs in terms of mar marginal cost of production. So hang on to your hats. Thank you for listening and we will see you next time.